Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. We are still in the grip of winter here in western New York. Most of our snow has melted off, but uh, it's still really cold. The weather hasn't really broke yet, so we're still doing a lot of indoor experiments. I'm um, hoping soon the weather will break and I'll be able to get outside and start doing some outdoor stuff. But I have my co-star here with me today, sitting very nicely. I didn't even have to give him any cheese. But uh, if you watched my last video, you know I've been playing with uh, supplementation with our uh, pasteurization process and basically trying to get some more nitrogen into our sawdust blocks and boost our final mushroom yields, but still be able to get away with pasteurization. So this experiment is along those same lines. Uh, in my last experiment, I added brand directly to our sawdust blocks and that worked out really well i was surprised i was able to get away with even uh 7.5 percent supplementation by dry weight and uh, still didn't have any contamination so that's very encouraging so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to try and mix some bran in with my grain spawn uh, typically per uh, sawdust block i'm putting in about a pound or a quart of grain spawn in and i'm going to try and add some bran right into my grain and try and sneak some extra supplementation in the back door that way. So it's gonna be interesting to see how the culture responds to having the bran in with the grain and what the logistics of that looks like, but I'm hoping it works out and it'll be another cool way to sneak some bran in, still do pasteurization and boost our final yields. Here's our five pounds of wheat grain, perfectly hydrated. And uh, we're going to go ahead and strain that off now. If you have any questions about how I do my grain spawn, check out our grain spawn for beginners video that details everything from start to finish. I'm going to skip over some things here. Um, but basically what I typically do is I strain uh, the wheat grain off, give it a little rinse, and then I'll lay it out on a towel, on a clean towel for a few hours to kind of air dry before I pack it into my jars. But because I'm adding bran today and this bran is dry, I'm, I'm not going to let it air dry. I'm going to basically strain the grain off, give it a little rinse with cold water. Then I'm going to put it in this tub and I'm going to add our wheat bran. And I'm hoping this, this dry wheat bran is going to absorb the excess moisture. But we'll try it out and we'll see what it looks like. Just uh, let that grain drain in the strainer there for a uh, couple minutes. Grain strain in the strainer, grain, yeah, that. And uh, then I put it in here, and we have our five ounces of wheat bran. We'll see if I guessed right. Uh, I'm hoping this absorbs all the uh, excess moisture that's in there right now. Got my special mycology spoon here. I sell these for $27.99 on my website. You guys want one? Actually, I think I, I got it at Walmart for like $3. But it works great. It's just a nice rigid plastic spoon in the cooking department. And I use it for like everything. It's great. So I'm going to stir all this in, get it all mixed up. And then I'm going to check and see if I think we're at field capacity. The way it's looking right now, I'm thinking we may still be just a little bit wet. We'll see though, once I get all this brand mixed in. We're still looking just a little wet here, so I'm going to add a couple more ounces of brand. That'll give us 7 ounces of dry brand total to five pounds of dry grain although rehydrated this grain probably weighs around seven and a half pounds now or so i'm going to mix this last two ounces in and we should be ready to pack it in our jars i'm running out of room down here again uh <laughs> i got uh got some enoki experiments going over here got some cordyceps experiments going over there so we're busy, the basement's filling up, but I uh, just filled these jars with our grain bran mixture and it kind of confirmed my suspicions. Uh, typically when I start with five, a little over five pounds of uh, 
dry wheat berries, I can perfectly fill seven quart jars. And even with the addition of the bran, I still basically perfectly filled seven quart jars here. So the bran is basically just filling up the spaces in between the grains. So I'm really interested to see how this runs once we uh, squirt it up with some liquid culture. But uh, right now we're gonna get it in the PC. Each jar is gonna get the uh, tin foil battle helmet as always for the PC. And we're gonna stack them in there. We're gonna run them. We'll get the PC up to 15 PSI. And I usually do quartz for 90 minutes. So we'll go ahead and run them for 90 minutes, let them cool and shoot them up with about five cc's of lc and i'm thinking i'm going to do some oyster species because i already have some uh, standard oyster wheat grain colonizing without the bran and we'll be able to do a side-by-side -side comparison that way so i'll probably do a few different strains of oyster but for now we're going to get them in the pc and run them for 90 minutes at 15 psi our jars are out of the PC, all cooled down in front of the flow hood and ready to get knocked up with some LC. So the moisture balance is looking pretty good. Uh, one thing I'm concerned about is I know bran can be pretty sticky. So typically after I shoot these up with LC, I like to give them a little shake and kind of redistribute the LC and the moisture throughout the grain. I'm going to try that with these. Uh, we'll see how well it works. Everything's knocked up, so now it's just time to see how they shake. So it shakes, but uh, it's definitely a lot stickier than what I'm used to. Usually my wheat shakes really easily. That's one thing I like about it. And I had to work at it a little bit this time with the bran in there. I had to slap it around a little bit to get it to cooperate. But uh, I was able to, you know, shake it up. And the uh, moisture distribution actually looks pretty good. So I'm just going to uh, put them in a storage tote, let them incubate, and I'm really interested to see how the mycelium is going to run on these versus just uh, straight grain. If there's going to be any difference or not, but we shall see. It's been about 10 days since I inoculated these jars, and I was taking a look at them, and um, I'm going to pull some out and show you. Some of them are doing better than others. Um, honestly, the grain is looking a little dry. To me i'm wondering if uh the brand pulled a little moisture out of the uh the wheat grains and knocked it a little out of balance but they're not looking too bad we're getting some good so we can get in focus getting some good colonization uh, what i'm going to do today is shake them up and hopefully that'll speed our colonization kind of mix everything up i'm interested to see how they're going to shake after uh 10 days of colonization but they should go okay right after i inoculated them so i don't think it'll be an issue um i'm not gonna make you guys watch me shake them up obviously it's not very exciting but uh that's the michigan oyster there's another michigan oyster um, let's see what else do we have here the bpks black pearl kings looking about the same you know, I'd say there may be, some of them are maybe close to 50% colonization. Other ones a little less. These are Pleurotus syringae. Everything's looking good. I don't see any signs of uh, contams. Maybe just a hair on the dry side. This is our Flamelina volutopace or Anoki from Appalachian Gold. And that thing's by far more colonized even than the oysters so you can see how aggressive that strain is and it does look a little powdery and that's normal for enoki mycelium they typically look like that in my experience pretty much every strain i played with so i'm going to give these guys a shake in front of the flow hood and we'll check back on them in another week or so and hopefully we'll have some fully colonized at that point
Just finished shaking everything up and I was actually a little surprised. Everything broke up pretty easily, even uh, more easily than it did right after I inoculated it. So uh, everything's looking good. Uh, I mentioned this in my grain spawn for beginners video as well that I typically shake my grain jars around like 25 to 50 percent colonization and uh, definitely speeds up your colonization uh, you get spotty runs like these jars were you know in big areas where no mycelium is growing yet you know you kind of mix everything up and it'll take right off again and uh, so yeah these are looking good uh, one thing I've heard as well is that um, this is our Anoki here you can still see all, a lot of mycelium in there that one's gonna be done first for sure but uh, the other thing I've heard is that adding brandy or grain also aids in recovery like when you do a shake they recover much more quickly and that mycelium just takes right off again so I'm gonna keep an eye on that as well because typically after I shake you know it's another maybe two three days before I really see the mycelium recovering so we'll check on these in the next uh, day or two and see how they recover, see if the brand seems to be speeding up the recovery. This is going to be the last installment of this particular video, I believe, because our jars, some of our jars are fully colonized and other ones are very close. So this is three days after the shake and I really didn't notice them rebound more quickly i guess but what did happen is once they did rebound which was you know the typical two three days after the shake uh they just blew up like just colonization everywhere which makes sense because all those little brand particles are basically extra inoculation points so i was able to shake them no problem they weren't too sticky with the brand again we have one ounce of brand in each one of these jars and these are quart jars. Typically, I'll do one quart jar to one pasteurized fuel pellet block. And uh, you can see these guys just blew right up. And a couple spots that could maybe use another day on some of these. But uh, some of them are definitely fully colonized and ready to use. So I will be spawning these to pasteurize fuel pellet block soon. And the interesting thing is, you know, we just finished our supplementation with pasteurized fuel pellet video and it basically figured out at least with aggressive strains, you can go with 7.5% brand by dry weight to your fuel pellets, um, which is, uh, was, was pretty amazing to me. Um, I wasn't sure I'd be able to get away with that cause I've never really tried it, but now we're basically sneaking another ounce of brand uh, in with our spawn. So that brings us up close to 10% supplementation, which is uh, pretty dang good. And I think is really going to boost our yield. So I'm going to call this video done because these guys are about fully colonized. I have no signs of any contamination and uh, they're looking great. So I can't wait to spawn these to some pasteurized fuel pellet blocks and let me know what you guys think in comments of this experiment. If you have any suggestions, I always love to hear that stuff. And I'll catch you next video.